Now let's find the residue of our f function at infinity. To this end, we need to build a Laurent expansion of this function at infinitely distant point. In accordance to what was said before, now since the branch cut doesn't stretch to infinity, this Laurent expansion will have a universal look independent of a particular direction in which we go to infinity. So we need to choose the most suitable one. And the most common choice is the direction along the real positive semi axis, so to the right. So let's position our destination point far to the right along the real axis. And let's change the variable z to x to get back to z later uh, when we obtain the final answer. Now we choose the reference point. And the reference point x0 plus i0 is somewhere on the upper bank of the branch card. And we connect these two points with some smooth contour. And again, we trace the changes of the arguments. Arrow 1 minus z rotates by angle pi in the clockwise direction. So the corresponding change of the argument is minus pi. Arrow 1 plus z just sways and doesn't turn at all. So delta argument of 1 plus z is 0. And as a result, the change of the argument of function g is minus pi plus 0 is negative pi. And now we write down the general formula for the regular branch. f of x equals the square root of the modulus of the ratio of g of x divided by g of x0 plus i0 multiplied by e2 negative i pi by 2 and times f of x0 plus i0. Now let's have a closer look at our square root. We transform it as follows. The modulus of the ratio is turned into the ratio of moduli and now let's recall that our g function is positive when x belongs to the segment from negative 1 to 1. So g of x0 plus i0 under modulus sign is positive and the modulus sign can be safely removed. So we rewrite it accordingly. And for our square root, we will now have the square root of modulus of g of x divided by the square root of g of x0 plus i0 multiplied by f of x0 plus i0 times negative i. And now have a more attentive look at our denominator. What I want to argue is that it's equal to f of x0 plus i0. Why? Well, that's because the f of x0 plus i0 is just the arithmetic root of our square root of g function. So it's a positive number. And the same positive number stays in the denominator of our fraction. So they're identical and can be cancelled. And as a result, as it should be, our Laurent expansion at point x is independent of the reference point. So let's rewrite it as negative i multiplied by the square root of the modulus of g of x. And the modulus of g of x can be expanded as x squared minus 1. And now we again use the real analysis technique to just tailor expand this perfectly positive uh, square root. As we will see in a second, it's enough to retain only two leading terms. So let's do this. We obtain x minus 1 over 2x. And changing back to z, we obtain the Laurent expansion for our f function. It's minus iz plus i over 2z. And here is our coefficient c negative 1 which is equal to i over 2. And as you remember, the residue at infinity is precisely minus c minus 1. Which yields minus i by 2. And this is our final answer for the residue of our f function. And this way we learned how regular branch separation works for different geometries of branch cards. And for different tasks from finding a particular value of our regular branches to Laurent expansions and residues at infinity. More interesting applications and logarithmic functions await us, so stay with us and you won't be disappointed. Mm -hmm.